The partition of India and the creation of independent nation states of India and Pakistan in 1947 and eventually Bangladesh in 1971 was a life altering event for the millions who were displaced and forced to migrate. During the biggest mass migration in the world of about 12 million people, over a million lost their lives in the process, the repercussions of which are felt to this date. Women were subjected to various kinds of violence by different agents during the partition. Estimates report that around 25 to 29,000 Hindu and Sikh women and 12 to 15,000 Muslim women were abducted, raped, forcibly impregnated, forced into marriage or to convert, maimed and killed on both sides of the border. Different communities were impacted in different ways based on their socio-cultural and economic positions in society, religion, caste and gender the pathos of these uprooted women have been captured in the novels of yashpal kisan chandar amrita pritham bhishma sahani and sadat hasan manto in this video of the feminist archive we take a look at the partition the violation of human rights and its impact on gender minorities of the 12 million migrants 10 million were from the punjab region the partition of the state into west and east punjab experienced violence on an unprecedented scale because of the confusion around it and the large population that was involved in the escalation of violence that lasted from march to november 1947 the account of communal frenzy was settled on women's bodies women were mutilated stripped naked and paraded down the streets with their bodies carved with religious symbols of the other community violence was also inflicted on women by their own men in the form of suicides that were coerced into or killed in the name of honor one significant event which took place in march 1947 was in the village of thua khalsa rawalpindi district where 90 women took their own lives in a desperate attempt to avoid rape abduction and religious conversion thereby averting the ruination of their community's honor another kind of violence that women faced was inflicted by the state immediately after the violence during partition many families had reported their family members especially their women as missing or abducted the immense scale of such reports compelled the government on both sides to act and the task was carried out by the united council of relief and welfare in september 1947 The prime ministers of India and Pakistan met at Lahore and decided to start a program for recovering abducted women from both the sides. On December 6, 1947, an Inter-Dominion Treaty was signed for this purpose, and the program was called Central Recovery Operation, consisting of women social workers and police. In 1949, the Abducted Persons of Recovery and Restoration Act was also passed for this mission. Under this act, a date was decided and conversions in marriages of women after March 1, 1947 were not recognized while these women were considered abducted persons. It was the same for Pakistan. The state decided by itself on who was it to be considered an abducted person and the right of the women themselves were completely disregarded. This highlights how the paternalistic state as well as the patriarchal notion of a helpless woman dictated the policies of the day and the women had no independent agency over their destiny and citizenship. This operation went on for 9 years after the partition. with around 22000 muslim women and 8000 sikh and hindu women being recovered certainly many women were happy to be recovered however many of them were taken by force those who had survived and adapted to the new circumstances found their lives uprooted once again social workers such as kamla ban patel rudla sarabhai and pushpa mehta who worked in the refugee camps had gotten personally attached to women survivors of partition though sympathizing with the plight of these women they were bound by law to return them to their natal countries which was ultimately decided by their religion their pain is vividly captured in the eyewitness chronicle of recovery and repatriation of the women left behind by the partition of india and pakistan entitled torn from the roots a partition memoir Furthermore, the state refused to recognize children 
born by abducted women as legitimate since they were born of conflicted sexual unions anthropologists note that the women were separated from their children and forcefully if they resisted the children were recognized as citizens of the country they were born in and staying with their fathers these women faced lifelong suffering due to permanently being separated from their born children the pregnant women on the other hand had to either give their children up for adoption or go for abortion or cleansing as it was called even though abortion was illegal in india the government financed mass abortions especially for this purpose thus such complex and life altering decisions were taken without the consent from the people that they were being taken for thereby dismissing any bodily autonomy and rights that the women had in india especially among hindu families the issue of purity served as a crucial factor women who had to suffer such barbarity during the partition were again subjected to humiliation and rejection because they weren't considered pure anymore the children that were able to accompany their mothers became a constant reminder of the violation of the woman while the millions of people who suddenly became refugees and the subsequent generations have either deliberately erased it from their memories or are still living with the bitter and often traumatic reminders